Hi, my name is Trevor Sullivan, a Microsoft MVP for Windows PowerShell. Today is November 11th, 2015, and we've just finished up the Midwest Management Summit Conference at the Mall of America in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about the ability to extend PowerShell's IntelliSense engine to provide custom dynamic completion results for your custom PowerShell commands. So essentially what you can do is you can use this PowerShell module that was developed by a Microsoft employee named Jason Shirk on the Microsoft PowerShell core team called Tab Expansion Plus Plus. What Tab Expansion Plus Plus allows you to do is to hook into PowerShell's IntelliSense engine and provide custom dynamic autocompletion for your own custom PowerShell commands. You can also write custom IntelliSense for other people's modules if they haven't provided it out of the box. So let's take a look, first of all, at how it, uh, IntelliSense works in the core PowerShell product, and then we'll take a look at how to extend it to work with other commands. So first I'm going to go ahead and fire up the PowerShell ISE right here. And just as an example, if we call the get process command, and we specify the name parameter, and we press the spacebar after that, we actually get prompted with a list of processes that are running on the local computer. So this is very convenient because we don't always know what the process names are that we're going to have to work with, right? Another example is the get sim instance command. And when we specify get sim instance and we specify the class name parameter, we'll also get IntelliSense for all of the WMI or SIM class names that are in the root SIMv2 namespace. Now don't worry about the implementation details here, but what I want to point out is that we can provide this custom IntelliSense to different commands and parameters. So in our example, what we're going to do is we're going to provide custom IntelliSense for the enable and disable PNP device classes. So if we take a look really quickly at these commands, I should say commands, not classes, the enable PNP device command allows us to enable plug and play devices on our computer. But as you can see, the IntelliSense is not very useful because it's simply pulling from the local file system. So what we want to do is we want to hook into PowerShell's IntelliSense engine and provide it custom completion results that actually help us populate the instance ID dynamically. The same thing happens for disable PNP entity. So the disable PNP entity command has an instance ID parameter. And as you can see, we also don't get any IntelliSense for that. So how do we know what the instance ID of a PNP device is? Well, we can actually delete our command and start typing over and say get PNP device. When we call get PNP device, we get a list of plug and play devices on our local computer. And we have useful properties like friendly name, instance ID, class, and status. So what the enable and disable PNP device commands are looking for is to get this instance ID over here on the right. But from a user perspective, it's much easier if we can identify a device based off the friendly name. So we're going to provide custom IntelliSense that allows us to select a device's name and then the IntelliSense engine will actually automatically complete the instance ID for us. So the first thing that we need to do is to go out to GitHub and download the Tab Expansion++ module. If you go out to github.com slash lazybaker, which is Jason Shirk's account on GitHub, he has a repository called Tab Expansion++. What we need to do is go out to this drop scanning registration git branch, and we're going to download the zip file for that branch. We're going to go ahead and extract this using 7-zip to a folder. And then we're going to go out to that folder and we're simply going to do a copy-based installation to our module directory in our user folder. So I'm going to go to my Documents folder, Windows PowerShell Modules, and I'm simply going to paste the module there. 
And then you'll want to make sure that you rename the folder to tab expansion plus plus, which is the actual module name. So now, if you scroll down inside this folder, you'll see that the tab expansion plus plus PSD1 module manifest file and the PSM1 module file are present, and they match the name of the folder that contains the module. This is very important to make sure that PowerShell is able to dynamically locate the module in our user module directory. Great. So now we've in installed the tab expansion plus plus module. So the next step is to write a custom argument completer function that allows us to dynamically retrieve data from get PNP device and feed that into the IntelliSense engine when we call enable or disable PNP device. So let's take a look at the tab expansion plus plus module and learn how to hook into that IntelliSense engine. So let's call get command tab expansion plus plus and it looks like we have a little bit of a bug here. Tab expansion plus plus can't be found. So let's go ahead and close the ISE, restart the ISE, and call get command module. And we should see the tab expansion plus plus module show up there. Great. So now everything's working properly. So as you can see, we've got a couple of useful commands here. The first one that you want to be familiar with is the register argument completer command. The register argument completer command allows us to register a custom PowerShell script that will feed custom IntelliSense results to our other PowerShell uh, commands as we are typing them. So if we, the other command that we want to be familiar with is the new completion result. New completion result allows us to create completion result objects and when we feed these completion result objects into the PowerShell engine, PowerShell will take these completion result objects and display them to the end user using the auto-completion or IntelliSense engine, which provides us that list view that we can then select from using the arrow keys or the mouse. So let's go ahead and build a custom argument completer and register it and test it out to make sure it works. Okay. So let's, let's call the tab expansion plus plus register argument completer command. This is going to register our custom function with the IntelliSense engine and hook into it so that we can provide our dynamic results. There's a few different parameters that we need to be familiar with. First is the command name. And the command name is an array of strings that represent the commands that we will perform autocompletion for. So in this case, we're going to specify an array that has enable PNP device and disable PNP device. These are the two commands that we want to provide autocompletion results for. Next, we specify the parameter name. Now, if you remember, the enable PNP device command and the disable PNP device command have a property called instance ID. And this is the instance of the PNP device that we want to disable. Not the friendly name, but the instance ID. The friendly name is much easier to consume for a human, but the instance ID is what the command needs in order to be successful. So our parameter name that we're going to autocomplete is called instance ID. Next, we're going to provide a script block, which is basically just a block of PowerShell code inside of curly braces that will be invoked every time that the IntelliSense engine is invoked for the instance ID property on the commands enable and disable PNP device. Pretty cool, right? So let's go ahead and implement our, the code for our script block. But I'm going to actually use a variable. So I'm going to create a variable called script block. And then I'm going to pass that variable into the script block parameter. So now we need to build out the logic of our script block that feeds these completion result objects to the IntelliSense engine. So the first thing that we need to do is specify a parameter block. And the parameter block is what allows the tab expansion to function to feed information into our function. So don't concern yourself with this too much. For now, all we're going to do is take an example function that's out of the box with tab expansion plus plus, and we're just going to copy and paste the parameter block. Okay.
Now we'll talk about the parameters in a later video, but for now, all we want to do is basically retrieve a list of PNP devices and then create the completion result objects that the IntelliSense engine is looking for. So let's create a variable called device list. We will call get PNP device and assign the results of get PNP device to the device list variable. Next, for each device in the device list, we want to create a new completion result. So we're going to call tab expansion plus plus as new completion result command, and we're going to specify the completion text, the tooltip, the list item text, and the completion result type. Now, each of these parameters maps to a different function. So the completion text is the text that, are, that actually gets completed when we hit enter. So the IntelliSense window is open here. When we hit enter, the completion text is what actually appears right there in front of us. The tooltip is what shows up right here where it says string tooltip. We can actually customize what shows up in that tooltip for each object that we're going to autocomplete for. The list item text is what shows up in this list of IntelliSense items right here. And then finally, the completion result type has a variety of options, but right now we're going to use parameter value because we're auto-completing the parameter value for the instance ID parameter for enable and disable PNP device. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill this out. So the completion text is going to be the device instance ID, right? Because we want the instance ID to actually appear in the PowerShell console when we confirm IntelliSense. Next is going to be the tooltip. And for the tooltip, we're going to use a little bit more plain, friendly English so that we can actually read it uh, more clearly. So the device named X with instance ID Y. And we're going to use .NET string formatting here to do some fancy substitution. So I'm going to say the device name, comma, device instance ID. And each of these properties will be substituted for the zero placeholder and the one placeholder. Next, I'm going to use the list item text. Now for the list item text, I'm simply going to have the device friendly name show up instead of the instance ID. So this will make it more human readable. So I'm going to specify the device dot name property. And then finally, the completion result type is going to be a parameter value. Great. So we've developed our script block that's going to create the IntelliSense completion results. And we also have our call to the register argument completer command, which is responsible for registering this custom code with autocompletion or the IntelliSense engine for these two commands for the instance ID parameter. And then it will call the block of code that we created here. So let's go ahead and hit F5 to execute this code. So we have now registered our argument completer. And we can confirm that the registration was successful by using the get argument completer command. If we take the results of this and pipe it into the out grid view command, we can then search and find a list of uh, autocompleters that have been registered with the system. So due to a minor bug here, the PNP device uh, autocompleter is actually not showing up. So what we're going to do is just save the script off to a file temporarily, close the ISE, and relaunch the ISE, and then we will rerun the argument completer. So now that it should be registered, we're going to call get argument completer, pipe that into out grid view, check to make sure that it's actually registered. And as you can see, now it's been successfully registered. So let's go ahead and test it out. So we're going to call enable PNP and hit control space to invoke the IntelliSense engine. We'll auto complete the command name. Then we will specify the instance ID parameter. And when we hit the space bar, the IntelliSense engine will be invoked, and as you can see, we are actually getting back a dynamic list of devices that are installed on the computer. So at this point, we can simply select a device that we want to disable. Let's go ahead and find one, such as the 
let's not disable my microphone, let's go ahead and disable the OCZ USB device because that's not even plugged in anyway. So as you can see, it automatically populated the instance ID even though the list item text was showing me the friendly device name. So we can actually just delete that and hit control space again to invoke the IntelliSense engine. And once again, we get that list back, right? So we can go through here and we can choose a different device to disable. So in this case, let's go ahead and choose something different, such as Um, I don't really have a good one here. I don't really want to disable any of my devices, actually. So um, let's just choose this one, and we'll say the device named Intel Centrino, blah, 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 with instance ID, PCI, slash, blah, 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 right? So as you can see, the tooltip text is different from the list item text, which is different than the text that is auto-completed when we actually confirm the IntelliSense completion. So using the, this methodology, you can actually provide customized IntelliSense for any other PowerShell command. Now there's further enhancements that we could do to our IntelliSense command. For example, if the user types a partial name of a device, such as Intel, we could actually do a match on that text using the parameter word to complete. So remember we created this parameter block, but we didn't actually do anything with it. So let's go ahead and make a little quick modification here. And we'll basically change this to say get PNP device where the name of the device matches using regular expressions word to complete. So what's going to happen here is that when we invoke the IntelliSense engine, it's going to pass in the partial text that we specified on the command line into our script block, and then we're going to filter the resulting devices based off of what the user specified. Okay? So let's go ahead and hit F5 to rerun that registration. So now we've updated our registration for the instance ID parameter. So now, if I hit the space bar, I'm not going to filter at all because I haven't specified any characters. However, if I were to type Intel, you'll see that I actually get a filtered list that contains Intel-only devices, right? So if I were to type audio and hit control space, I will get a limited, a much smaller list of devices that contain the text audio. And then when I hit enter, it will auto-complete the device that I selected. So I hope that this video was useful. This is an introduction to the Tab Expansion Plus Plus PowerShell module by Jason Shirk. Again, my name is Trevor Sullivan, a Microsoft MVP for PowerShell. Check me out on Twitter at PCGeek86 and on my website at trevorsullivan.net. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.